We were watching the CDSI 2023 playoffs the other day, and we couldn't help but be amazed at how WPM Yopi went god mode on a hard point match against Wolves. Blacklist, Seattle, and Kagendra's Clove had a KRM battle in their Hardpoint Summit match, and they just proved that you can use a shotgun in the bigger stages, not just with good aim, but with discipline, good decision making, and teamwork. So we decided to help you take your shotgun skills to the next level. When it comes to shotguns, precision matters, and it also applies to every single weapon in the game. It may suffer from a few limitations and drawbacks such as limited range, inconsistent spread patterns, long reload time, and low mag capacity, but what makes the shotgun different is the way it dominates at close range. It has high mobility, high damage output, and is very frustrating to go against. So to help you get started, we made 5 tips on how you can become not just a better shotgunner, but to become a better overall player as well. So sit back, relax, and let's get right into it. There are many ways to peek an enemy, but due to the shotgun's limited range, peeking at wide open areas where assault rifles shine is a bad idea. But it doesn't really matter since we're going to engage in tight spaces anyway, so we'll focus on how to peek enemies in close range instead. Let's watch WPM Yopi's clip again on how he clutched the final moments of their hardpoint match against Wolves. You can see that Yopi saw no one at the left side of the entrance so he checked the right side as soon as he enters P3. After he gets the first heal on the right corner, he immediately checks all of the remaining angles and clears it for the team. He also holds the entry point instead of over pushing and kills 3 more players that entered the hill and thanks to his teammates backup they managed to secure the win. So let's start with the basic slide peeking. It's the most common form of peeking in the game and is very easy to learn and you can spice it up a bit by jumping to do a slide jump peek. Sliding before jumping helps you gain a bit of momentum boost so you can cover more distance and appear a bit faster to catch your enemies off guard compared to just normal jump peeking. Since most players aim their crosshair stomach level as they expect most enemies to slide peek 90% of the time. Another simple but effective way of peeking is called strafe peeking. This is widely used by pros in the competitive scene because you always want to be ready against your enemies at all times. All you have to do is align your crosshair where you think the enemy might show up and pull your joystick to the direction where you want to contest. Not only does it take very little effort to do so, it's actually pretty effective too especially when using shotguns since we don't have to ADS in close range, we won't have to worry about our ADS movement speed slowing us down. As long as you have cover to work with such as walls, door frames, and the like, you're most likely gonna win your gunfights. But how exactly can you use cover to your advantage? Cover such as rocks, walls, vehicles, or any other objects that you can hide and get cover from enemy fire are your best friend. One of the best things you can do with it during a gunfight is to jiggle peek and slide to cover. While it may be fun to do to mess with your enemy, it's also a great way to gather information without the risk of exposing yourself. Just don't overdo it as you're risking showing yourself out of cover due to the desync existing in the game. Alright, time for a quick test. I decided to push mid this round and saw two enemies at the balcony, so I decided to back off. Unfortunately, my teammate still made a run for it and got killed. I took the bomb and prone to get cover. The enemy over pushed and I finally got my first kill. If you were in this situation, what would you do? Smoke balcony and push or smoke and heal up first? Push A site or go B site? One guy jumped down from the balcony. Do you fight or run away? Post plant scenario bomb planted on attacker side. Do you go up shop or inside main road? You saw the last guy on the minimap. Do you contest or play time? Let me explain how or why I made these choices. I got the bomb and took cover first since they had an LMG. How did I know? Uh, I listened to the gunshots and saw it in the kill feed. When we got the first kill, I threw a smoke at mid to block off an enemy, potentially holding top balcony, and took cover first because we were low on health. 
I checked connectors just in case someone was camping there and decided to go to B site since two of my teammates died at A main earlier. One guy jumped down from balcony and I decided to fight because I had a teammate nearby. Unfortunately, I couldn't react in time and got a hit marker but I still managed to trade my teammate. After planning the bomb, I decided to take shop since it was closer to the bomb and I heard a couple of footsteps while planning earlier. I managed to get the third kill, took over and popped the UAV and saw the last guy on the minimap. I took a quick peek to gather information just to make sure and decided to kill time instead since I have good cover to play with. Last guy decided to fake the fuse and pushed me. I took a quick peek again for info and played with my cover again. The enemy ran out of time so I pushed him and got the final kill. If you manage to get 4-5 to five answers right, then I think you're good to go. 3 correct answers is not bad but needs a little more work. If you guess 3-4 to four answers wrong, then you should do something about it. Remember to keep the close covers and move from a different location to another as you don't want utilities to start raining on you. Be aware of your surroundings and where you're running towards and take advantage of nearby covers that you can use to not become an easy kill. Garena shotgunners won't be the same without movement because who doesn't like movement, right? Movement in games might seem like it's just about how you move your character, but there's actually a lot more to it to benefit from other than just you looking cool. When it comes to movement, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be fast and crazy in front of your opponents. It also just means you want to give your enemy something to worry about other than just spraying and tracking you left and right. After all, style doesn't win you games, kills do. But before we talk about this movement technique, we'll be sharing to you, using any types of movement like jumping, slide, and strafing does not affect spread during ADS or hip fire. The crosshair might say otherwise, but it doesn't really affect the spread at all, so don't worry about the pellet not hitting your target, and instead, focus with your crosshair placement and take your time to land your shots. One of the perfect examples of good movement is just by running left and right, Yes, you heard me right. Running left and right is always better than just running straight towards your enemies. Not only that, but it also helps you decide which type of movement to use next and where to go to gain some sort of advantage. Swiping your screen left and right doesn't really help. Instead, move your joystick diagonally left and right, not too slow and not too fast. One movement that you can add while doing this is to dolphin jump. This used to be popular, don't get me wrong, this is still popular today, when movement wasn't really a thing during the early stages of the game where drop shotting was the meta. To do this, face the direction where you want to slide and face the opposite direction after and jump. Then you can move left plus right then dolphin jump for a better momentum and outcome. You can take this to another level by moving left and right, dolphin jump, strafe, dolphin jump again and slide. And congrats, you just became a certified Garena sweaty shotgunner. But wait, we're not done yet. Your good knowledge of the game will get you a long way. And you need a deep understanding of how the game truly works in order to become one of the best players inside the game. Choose small maps as it will be your playground such as Nuketown, Slums, Shoot House, Summit, and Standoff, where there are lots of covers and enclosed areas for you to play with to your advantage. Shotguns are actually pretty easy and hard to use. Let me explain. Sure, it has a crazy range and time to kill and you just have to aim and press the shoot button, but you also have to consider the multiple things going on in the game. Most weapons have a fast time to kill nowadays which makes the game a lot more punishing for players who push in without thinking properly. You might want to rely on audio cues such as footsteps, gunshots, callouts, and visual cues like enemy bullet tracers, red dots on the minimap, and more, because you will be the one engaging in close range fights more often. And this is how the importance of how good decision making comes in. I've seen a lot of players die because of peaking angles for no reason and taking on fights without a plan, rushing into areas on the map where gunfights happen a lot just because they want to. You'll always want to have a plan and commit to what you think is the most effective play, like pushing a specific place, where to throw your utilities to get the most value out of it, and which shoot to take for rushing and flanking and when and where to peek. Having good decision making skills can help you win more matches. You can quickly assess the situation even during intense situations and still make the best choice possible not just for you but for the whole team. It's pretty simple and you can improve your game sense a lot more by just spending time playing the game and learning from your mistakes. Just remember to take your time and find a good timing, don't hesitate and be confident. And the final piece of the puzzle for you to become a better shotgun player is by having good loadouts. We've tested three different shotguns that are currently used in both ranked and competitive, the KRM-262, the BY-15, 
and the R90. To help you decide what kind of shotgun you want to run with, let's start with the KRM. The KRM262 can consistently one tap until 12 meters with proper centering and up to 13 to 14 meters, which can be very inconsistent because of RNG. It's an algorithm commonly used in video games that determines random events like the shotgun pellet spread, landing a critical hit from a game that you play, or getting that legendary skin at the lucky spin in your first draw. The BY15 can consistently one tap until 12 meters with proper centering and up to 13 to 14 meters, which can also be very inconsistent again because of RNG. Lastly, the R90, it can consistently one burst with ADS until 16 meters with proper centering and up to 18 meters, which can also be very inconsistent because of RNG. Always remember to utilize ADS as it tightens the spread and can give you a better chance of hitting most of your pellets. Use these popular secondaries both in ranked and comp like the MW11, GS50, Dobra, and the shorty or melees like the assault knife or the prize fighters. Lightweight, gung ho or quick fix, and dead silence are the best perk for shotguns, the purifier and annihilator for offensive operator skills, and use the kinetic armor or the tac 5 for a more defensive operator skill. There's also a technique that Garini shotgunners love to do, the stim shot, gung ho, and kinetic armor combo. To do this, first make sure you have the mentioned items above equipped. Then in a match, you just have to simply press the stim shot and engage an enemy wherever you want, and don't worry because the gung ho perk will do its magic by removing the stim shot's initial slow down and you can finally add the kinetic armor once you have it fully recharged to help you become an unstoppable force for a couple of seconds. Just keep in mind that the speed boost only lasts for 2 seconds so do it if you're going to commit to engaging an enemy. The kinetic armor provides 100 HP to the body only which can give you a bit more time to last in a gunfight. The stem shot gives you a 20% movement speed boost, 25% strafe speed boost and a 25 HP per second all in a 2.1 second of sting animation. Use lethal utilities like frag grenades, molotovs, and thermites to flush out enemies from cover and delay their pushes. Use tactical utilities like smoke grenades to conceal yourself or block enemy vision, or just use flashbangs to clear angles and give you a chance to move in and set up a kill. Lastly, use these core streaks like the UAV, Shock RC, Counter UAV, and Hunter Killer Drone if you like to play aggressively. And add the Predator Missile, Wilson, or the Sentry Gun if you play a bit more passively. Before we close this video off, here are the MW11, GS50, Dovra, and Shorty builds, and here's the KRM262, BY15, and the R90 builds. Here are the full loadouts that you can use to start off your shotgun journey. Do you have a secret shotgun tip? Let us know down in the comments below. Karem has been out for a long time now, but you still might be making these silly mistakes. Learn how to correct them right here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.